Hey everybody, uh, this is going to be just a quick, well, I shouldn't say quick because I talk too much, but I'm going to try to make this a very quick video on how to actually construct the Golfer Gary 2.0 tapered sleeve. Um, just a few things to note going through this video. Here's attempt number one that I horribly botched uh, six or seven videos ago, and this is going to be the, uh, we'll call it a refresh. You will see during the video I'll be using shortcut keys. If you go into your sketch menu or your create menu, you'll see that there are letters associated next to some of the tools. And whenever you click this, it opens up that tool. Um, so you should see it in the video. But if I'm talking about a function and you didn't see where I went to get it, it's more likely than not a shortcut key. So pay attention for those keystrokes within the video. Um, gonna try and make this a pretty quick rundown so I might go a little bit fast um, one other thing to be aware of I am looking at the original design on my second screen so if you're wondering where I get some values from it's probably because I'm pulling them from there uh, but I'll do my best to explain those alright so let's jump into the nitty-gritty of it so the first thing I want to do is circle again last reminder under the sketch tool options I will be using the shortcut keys so I can click center diameter circle or I can just click the key C and it has the same effect. All right, so we're going to make this initially 22.0 millimeter diameter. This is strictly because of the clubs that we're working with. We happen to have 13 to 17 millimeter diameter clubs. So this was a comfortably thick enough but also low enough profile for what we want to do. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here for the next function. Now, the next thing that I want to do is actually make a 3 millimeter line. You'll notice when I zoomed in, the grid automatically scales with us, so each of these is half a millimeter. Um, so, let's not start before I ask you to. Okay, there's our 3 millimeter line. You notice how I went from the top down? Um, that's because whenever you're working with tools, uh, and interacting, yeah, interacting, um, interfacing them with other drawn features, uh, you'll see that it auto snaps. I get close enough and it thinks, oh, you're actually trying to draw in there. It should actually snap to where the axes intersect any of these drawn features. I have it turned off because it really annoys me. I digress. Okay, so this is three millimeters long. Again, if you really want to know values, come talk to me afterwards, email me. Uh, I don't want to bore you with what they actually are. Okay, so I'm going to make this 7, arbitrary number. You'll see why I do it in a second. Tab, this is actually going to be 90 minus 38.9. Uh, I actually want the value in between this line and this, the line that I'm currently drawing to be 30.89. And I don't want to do real math. So, boom, there you go. Okay, and now I'm going to trim this line You'll notice it throws up a little warning. All that means is, hey, you said you wanted to distinctly dimension this before or say the exact length. Now you've just trimmed it and ruined that. Be warned. Dimensions are pretty important. Clicking escape will get you out of the tool that you're currently working with. And a really important note I want to make. When I zoom in, you'll notice that these two lines don't intersect. By the same token, this, what's supposed to be that kind of outer edge of the circle, awesomely yeah, awesomely. Also doesn't perfectly coincide with what I can select to be the outer edge of the circle. This is strictly a visualization function of fusion. Okay, this center line, I don't actually need for anything anymore, so I'm going to turn it into a construction line. Construction lines don't actually have an effect on other lines being drawn, but I'll show you why it's important here, well, now. So I'm going to use the mirror, mirror. Ooh, English is really hard for me all the time apparently. Select the mirror line, select the object, and now we have an exact carbon copy of this line on the other side of this construction line. I no longer need the construction line, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to move this dimension too so it's not in our way as we work. Okay, the next thing I'm going to go to is the circular pattern tool. This will take a feature and rotate it around the extent of a circle. So whenever you draw a circle and you make any shapes or otherwise drawings, sketches if you will, off of the circle. This will allow you to pattern that a set number of times around the actual extent of the circle. 
So uh, I'm going to select my center point first, just because I don't know what it is. After a recent update, Fusion doesn't really like to behave and let you select objects first. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and now you can see what I was talking about. It is fit however many you so choose to add all the way around um, and, and constrains them to intersect with a circle. So 12 is the magic number that we used before. And you'll notice zooming in just a little bit. Notice how there's a small gap there? That's why we're using the really weird 38.9 degree um, angle between the original construction line and this newly drawn line. We want that little bit of a gap. So if the 3D printer <coughs> is slightly out of spec, uh, these parts will still slide together very, ni together very nicely. Also, 12 is experimental. Feel free to ask more should you so desire. Okay, the next thing that I really want to do is I'm going to now make this three-dimensional. So I'm going to use the extrude tool, and you'll notice how I can select each individual element. You want to be lazy? Left click, you have to click and drag. There you go, they're all selected. I would like it 26 millimeters tall. Again, just a number we came up with. There we go, and off to the side. There you go. Now you can see there's very small flat parts, and then there's the actual parts of the star and or tapered sleeve. Again, this is kind of going through the original design process that I used, so there are better ways to do this. By no means do you have to actually follow this. The next step that I wanted to do is create a dome top while I was figuring out how we were actually going to screw this closed onto the brace. Uh, or rather onto the golf club. So I made use of the sphere tool. I made sure to select the top surface of this circle and then I made it 28 millimeters. Uh, I didn't make an outtake uh, of all the previous clips but it took me about four times to realize that 22, the inner diameter that we used for that circle, uh, plus three for each of these little stars is uh, 28. So Sorry that you couldn't see my shame when I can't do math. Let's undo that. That's not what I wanted to do. 28. I actually want to join these two. Okay. Now you'll notice that's kind of a weird shape, and it's not exactly what we were going for. We kind of want to continue that star or that ridge all the way up to the top. So, and I'm going to show you the cheater's way. I'm going to go back to sketch one. I'm going to right click on that, hit edit sketch. Come on. Draw over the entire thing. Control C. Stop sketch. It will now rebuild however far we've got in the rest of our build history, which you can see down here in our timeline. I'd like to go to the bottom surface. I'm going to hit sketch. I'm going to do it on this surface. And then I'm just going to hit Control V. This will make sense in a second here. And now I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to make it much wider than the feature below that. And let me take you off to a side view here so you can see what I'm about to do. Okay, and now I want to extrude. This is the conversation that we kind of talked about before where you can either build up to what you want, so design specifically the features that you want, or you can cut away to get the shape that you want. I'm a personal fan of cutting away. Um, that's just my exploratory and creative process. Do as you so choose. So again, uh, I'm just kind of cutting out, and you'll notice originally this says join, right there. Um, and eventually when it intersects another surface, it realizes, oh, you're probably actually trying to cut it. And it will leave you with, anytime now, ta-da! This is the surface that it'll actually leave you with. Again, purely part of the exploratory process. It doesn't have to be done one way or another. All right, the next thing that I want to do, construction plane, I'm going to set this 26 millimeters high. Well, it's going negative 26 because of the way my axes are set up. And that now brings us to the top surface that we were originally working with. Okay. Let's scooch this down just a little bit. Okay, let's go. Nope, that's not the view I wanted. Can we not? Can we not? Cool, there we go. 
Now, the next thing that I actually want to do is to draw the fins that kind of extend out. Well, here, let's give you a side view. Um, that kind of extend out this way so that you can actually put the screws in without worrying about taking up any real estate um, or making the walls too thin where they contact the club. So there's a couple different ways that you can actually do this. Um, I drew this offset plane just as a reference to see what I'm working with. Um, and then I'm going to start a sketch. I'm going to make it in the XY plane, which is this current upright view. Here, let's go off to a side view so you can kind of see. Now you'll notice how currently the XY view, that thin line right there, cuts this perfectly in half. That's kind of what I'm concerned about. I want to draw the sketch and then evenly extrude it on both sides. Come on. Nope. Come on. Come on. Okay, let me really quickly reference the line that I drew before. And it is... You'd think I'd be prepared after like 14 takes. Evidently not. Sorry. Um, okay, scrolly, scrolly, scroll. Okay, so notice how this thin line is the plane. This is just the point I choose to draw from. Doesn't matter. Nope, not really. I made it 4.5. Why? I really couldn't tell you. That's just what seemed right at the time. I'm going to make a line right here. Just a short line. I'm going to make this a construction. I just want to use it as a reference. Should I need to mirror anything? Actually, which I will do now. Nope. That is the offset tool. That's why that's not working. Mirror. Select the mirror line. Ta-da! Objects. And there we go. Okay. Now there's one other dimension I want to be concerned about. I did not make this a perfect arch or part of a circle. Um, I intentionally made it thicker at the top because this is the point that's going to eventually taper out very, very thin, and I didn't want to lose any structural support as this piece got a lot thinner. So it looks like I made it, interestingly enough, five on the money. So let's get rid of this construction line. Let's get rid of that little guy too. I don't know what that's doing there. Got to zoom in a little bit. And I made this five. And escape. Again, turn this into a construction line so it has no bearing on the actual drawing. And zoom out a little more. Okay, perfect. Next thing we're going to use is the arch tool. Make it a three point, one, a two. Try this again. First end point, second end point, and third end point. Okay. Get rid of this. Okay, now you'll notice how this didn't turn that kind of, and eh, not really beige, almost like a really light pink or salmon. Uh, I don't know why I said that so aggressively. Apologies. Um, that means that this is not a completed shape, and it doesn't consider it a solid object. So I'm going to draw a line from one side to the other. Boom. Now it's highlighted. And this is the part we actually want to extrude. So... I should probably have paid attention to how thick I made this before, but I'm going to do it now. Okay, I made it 18 millimeters thick. So, extrusion. I'll give you a side view here. <clears throat> Stop the sketch. E for extrude. Now you'll notice there's a couple different things. I want to use join. I want to use distance. I'm going to set that to 9, and you'll see why. I'm going to set it to two-sided or symmetric. doesn't really matter which. Uh, two-sided will give you two different options. And you can also do a taper angle, which is pretty helpful. Okay. And now we're left with, I don't know what you want to call this. It's funky, that's for sure.
and the shape we're basically left with. So the next thing that we're going to do is, let's back up, back up, back up. Okay, we're going to fill it. We're going to try to fill it. This edge. And this edge. Now, that plane is getting in my way, so I'm just going to turn it off. It has no bearing. It was really just as a reference. Okay, so fill it one... Fill it two. I made it three. Why? Don't know. Doesn't matter. Nope, not really. Good to go. And the next step. Okay. In the grand scheme of things, having this really nicely rounded top not really important. The lower the profile, in this case, strictly in this case, the better. Uh, that was a pretty big concern to Gary. So, we're going to go to plane one. And let's not do this. We're going to make an offset plane. And we're going to make it to the top of the original sphere that we drew. I... think, and evidently I'm wrong, huh, that's not it at all. I think that this is just a geometric error, but I don't actually know. That's close enough. Okay. And okay. Does it matter? No, not really. This is approximate anyways. So I now want to kind of cut off that unnecessary cap. I'm going to make a rectangle that is significantly larger than it. Stop the sketch. I'm going to extrude it. Let's move everything in the center of the screen. Oh boy, you guys are stuck with me just 17 minutes this far. This is surprising. Okay, and cut it all off. Perfect, good to go. Now we're going to come back, we're going to fill it. These two edges that we just created, doesn't matter what it is. Nope, I think I chose eight or seven. Now let's make it eight, so it's a nice and rounded corner right there. Okay, and I'm going to go back and hide that construction plane, because I don't care about it anymore. And this is the shape that we're now left with. Kind of that star, uh, a hard stop, and a funky really funky looking taper on the side. If you really want to get into the aesthetics of it, you can scroll right in, use the fillet tool, and round this corner out. I did it on the original model. I'm not going to show you guys the entire process. Just makes it a little bit nicer to look at. But again, that takes more time than I'm willing to divest. Okay, so now that we've done that, we have actually filleted everything, and now we're going to make the borehole. Um, or the counterbore, as it were. A couple ways that you can go about doing this. There is a taper. So that actually means at the top, it's thicker than at the bottom. Uh, by how much? Varies per club. Uh, I think it was 1.5 millimeters, or, and that's diameter, a 1.5 millimeter difference in the diameter. So there's a few different ways to go about it. Again, from the start, we could have designed this where there was actually a hole in the bottom, but we didn't. So what we can do, and what I'm going to do, is show you guys how to make use of the loft tool. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a circle in the bottom here. And just to take arbitrary numbers, I'm going to start with 14... Eh, we'll call it 13. 13.0. Okay, okay, okay. 
And we know it gets thicker as it... I almost slipped there with the phrasing. Uh, as we work our way up the club, it gets larger in diameter. So I'm now going to draw a circle on the top surface, which I want to make... I'm just going to make it 14.5, so there's somewhat of a notable difference as we do this. And now I'm going to use the loft tool. Note, whenever you're using any fusion function, the plane that you start on, or the first object that you click on, is set as kind of your ground reference. So if you want a loft from one to another, for instance, if you're doing a square to a circle, or a circle to a square, you want to click on, let's say you want to do circle to square. Click on the circle first, then click on the square. It's kind of hard for me to articulate, because I've only run into it a couple times, but sometimes you'll just get weird errors um, that you wouldn't really anticipate or like. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do... Try and get a better view going on here. We're going to go from here down to here, those two circles. Create, loft, cut, profile 1, profile 2, and now you'll see when we go to the side view, this is what it's trying to do. You can see there's an ever so slight taper as it goes down, right? Very close to the, actually slightly over the edge, at the edge, slightly inside the edge. Now, the other way that you could do this is using the extrude tool. There is a taper option as you go. I don't want to do that math and actually figure out what it's going to be, so I would highly recommend the loft tool. We click enter, okay, profile one, profile two. Don't worry about changing any of these. Um, and we're going to click okay. Now here's what we're left with. Hole in the top. Hole in the bottom. And if we actually look at the top, you can see it's slightly smaller down below, so it'll appear as a textured kind of shaded region. And that's the biggest, arguably the biggest step. Um, that is what has to be customized for every single golf club that we're working for, which is a huge pain in the butt. So I challenge somebody to please design something better. Um, okay, we got the hole. Now you'll notice this is pretty close. Um, I would like to keep these two from touching. It's harder, much harder for a 3D printer to come to a really fine point like that. Um, like, actually, well, we're working our way up, but when it, it's working in a single plane. So if this is the plane that it's currently printing in, if this kind of pinched to a stop and went back um, on all four corners, the 3D printer has a very hard time filling that in. You're trying to use circular objects and make them concentric to fill out a space like that. Just not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so with that, we have... Well, we have most of the stuff built now. Um, well, the last two parts are actually going to be pretty easy. It's just going to be adding screw holes, uh, adding the holes for the nuts and washer, and then we're going to split this puppy into two. So I'm going to go to any one of these faces, really. Come in. Zoom in. I'm going to draw specifically on this face. Nope, not what we wanted. Specifically on this face, here we go. Now, we're working with M3 screws, which means that they have a diameter of roughly... Sorry, a radius of roughly 2.5 millimeters. Um, so, I always like to give a minimum, absolute minimum, of 0.1 millimeters of, uh, call it fudge room or flex room, because the tolerance of the 3D printer is never 100%, and any of the materials that we print in have a very slight shrinkage factor. So, the first thing I'm actually going to do... Come on. I don't know why we're selected. I don't want you to be highlighted. 
first thing we're going to do, choose the center point and make this 2.6, or I'm actually going to use 2.7, which is way too small. So it must be a radius of 2.7. Yeah, that makes more sense. That's what we're looking for. So what is that? I don't want to do math. Cool, 5.4. Make a little line so we can mirror it. Instruction. And I gotta kinda fly through this last part since I don't need to bore anybody else with what we're doing. Select our mirror line, select our object. Interesting. So I'm like, ah. Okay, I see what happened. I accidentally selected this as one of the objects, which I wanted it to be a mirror line. Okay, click OK. How deep do we want it? Well, we measured this a while back, and I think the head of the screws that we have are roughly two millimeters, so I'll make it 2.5, um, because I can. I'm gonna go back to this face. Now I want to draw another, a through bore, if you will. Um, so find the center of the circle. They are three millimeters in diameter. I'm going to make that 3.2. So that we have a little bit of breathing room. I could have just kept that construction line, but so it goes. 3.2, 3.2. Okay, and now I'm going to make a bore that goes all the way through. This will be the reference for how I set the uh, hex nuts on the other side. Now you see we've got this pretty shape. And now we're actually going to create our hex nuts. So go to your sketch. Go to polygon. Now there's two different options. There is circumscribed and there is inscribed. If you go to circumscribed, this basically builds whatever polygon, however many lines you want, outside of a circle. If you do inscribed, it builds it inside. These give you two vastly different um, dimensions. So point to point, well, I'll show you as we go. I use circumscribed. It makes more sense to me for what we're working on. Um, the, when you, If you ever take a CAD class, there's a surprisingly large amount of detail that is put into this because it makes a vastly different outcome for whatever you're using. So it automatically knows I want to use six and you'll see using the, I think I clicked circumscribed. Um, it's going to fit whatever polygon, however many sides around the circle you're working on. So the radius of the circle is what dictates the overall shape that you're working with. I don't distinct, well, I'll just actually look at it. Um, it was the shape that we used is a little bit odd. I can say that much. Um, let me try and get you guys a good reference for what it actually is. Okay, so 2.8 is what I used before. It actually fit pretty well. So, try to make this 2.8. Now, here's the considerations. Now, let's see if I can sneak down to the... I'm not going to be able to sneak down the pan, too. As I rotate this, now we have a flat side kind of facing out and facing in. That means force going to be distributed on two different points now. Here, it's only one. Actually, I'll make this grossly too large so you can really see. So right here, we have a lot of really, really thin parts versus right here, we have two thin parts. Um, is this a big concern? Actually, it really is. We've had a lot of these break in the past. Um, so the... Technically speaking, the radius of the circle being drawn 
parallel to the x-axis is kind of the way to go. Um, it's a lot stronger. They just break less. We can break out into those the dynamics of that a little bit more. Let's click Enter. There we go, 2.8. I'll make another reference line. Or construction line, my apologies. Reference line was the old term used for it. We're going to mirror. Doesn't want to let me try it the first time. Okay, and okay. I'm just going to trust those there. Ba -ba, it is cool. We're going to extrude this. Now, the nuts that you're working with are going to vary. Um, the ones that we used are approximately. Emitly 2. I'm going to call it 2.2 .2 just to be safe. Okay. There we go. And now you have all the basics of the Golfer Gary 2.0 brace. The last section uh, that we really need to be concerned about is cutting a center piece out of this um, so that these two sides are free floating and can kind of fit the shape of the golf club. Um, there's no distinct way to do this. This was completely guess and check for me originally, and eventually I found a number that I was pretty comfortable with um, in terms of the how much I actually wanted to cut out of this. Um, I'm just going to make this a reference line for the center. Two is a good number. 2.2, .2, I think, is what I actually went with. Um, originally, so I'm going to show you guys that again, just for the point of showing that. Um, notice how I did 1.1 and 1.1. I did them on opposite sides of the line. That's just a really quick way to cheat making a rectangle instead of having to do, um, well, frankly, instead of doing it properly. Okay, and now we're going to cut the entirety of this piece out. Show you a side view of what that really looks like. Three, two, one, enter. Cool. And there you go. Now you have a fully designed Golfer Gary 2.0 brace. Down the bore, a little bit of a side angle. Let's zoom out a little bit. Give us a nice pan around. That's what you're dealing with. And with that, I've hit probably 20 minutes too long. So if there are any questions, uh, feel free to check in the Fusion Drive if you're actually affiliated with Bioprint. If you're not affiliated with Bioprint and you're interested in hearing a little bit more about this project, uh, feel free to search this on Thingiverse. Uh, I think I posted it as Golfer Gary. Um, or reach out to Bioprint. Uh, you can Google us, Bioprint, uh, capital B, capital P, one word. Uh, RIT Bioprint, I think, is the the keyword or the tagline that's used uh, across the internet. So you can find us on our website. On our Facebook page, we do have this very YouTube channel, or maybe you're viewing this on the website. Uh, Instagram, a LinkedIn, and an email, bioprint at rit.edu. So if you have any questions, feel free to email us. And if you have any suggestions, let us know.